Hello my friends and welcome to Open Studio D again. We are on the road and you may ask where we're we going. We are going to one of the biggest, biggest is most and most prestigious uh, plane air competition in the United States and maybe even in the world. Uh, how big you may ask? Or if I can tell you that if the prices for the first place or best of show or um, artist choice the amount dollar dollar wise is about fifteen thousand dollars for each uh, I think this is a pretty good competition also when you know that con co uh, collectors who come fly from, from California Oregon from Texas from you know all the you know sides of the United States, all the coasts from the United States, and they pay ten thousand dollars just to get to meet the artists. This is one of the best. Um, so we are going to meet with some artists uh, today. Actually, we will be meeting with Zufar Bikov, uh, my dear friend and uh, fellow artist. So we're going to meet with him, uh, ask some questions, see how he paints, and so on and so on. So, let's go. I mean, we're already going. Here we go! We are in St. Michael's and we're looking for a maritime museum where Zufar Bikov is waiting for us. So this is a street of St. Michael's, historical place, um, a lot of history here. So let's find Zufar. Oh, we just got in St. St. Michael's. Uh, meeting with Zufar and he's right there painting he's working hard all right so let's um, let's take our stuff and um, meet with Zufar Zufar yes. hey. How are you doing? <laughs> all right this is Zufar Bikpov one of the best East Eastern plein air painter Hi, how are you? So, what are you painting today? Uh, this is my second day. I've been painting it yesterday morning and we're lucky that the storm, whatever tropical storm, Elisa, <laughs> what was the name of it? So it's passed and looks like the next few days we'll have weather which is quite stable. So I'm planning, I'm doing kind of color study at this moment and um, later maybe I'll do a bigger painting. That's one of my uh, four step approach. So I kind of test will painting be a good if I invest more time and efforts in it. And so far it's very encouraging. I love what's happening. The issue is that the boats change every day because the boats are boats. So we've been discussing with other artists, shall we chain them? Maybe some spots need to have some sign, no parking or something. It's a joke. <laughs> yes. So right. yes, come on, come on in, join. Let's get inside and see, check, check him out. Oh, Zufar, so looking at this, what do you would recommend to paint from your perspective? Uh, I was exploring this area yesterday and um, I found a number of different angles. Uh, maybe all week I'll be working here, working on the same view under different angles because compositionally, nice proportions, nice arrangement of shapes. And right from here, I would say uh, it's like uh, what I chose, I, I included this white boat on the right side, kind of you see with that teal color uh, top, and it works well. From here, it creates also a nice triangle. I usually built my composition based on triangles, and uh, but what I like in 
this view, that left side of all these boats as one group has kind of fast and you can see far away uh, flag visibility and I would say the edge of the boat versus shape of this water creates S shape which is always pleasing at least for my aesthetics for my own uh, feeling taste and uh, what, I'm, what I'm looking for <laughs> as important details and of course what we call the pass of um, eyesight eye view. Uh, there are a few other nice uh, spots here the problem with boats is that it's hard to predict when they will uh, take off and the only way to know is to ask uh, owners many of them are friendly this is nice nice place actually look at the view now I like that exposure now behind the flag you see extra horizontal kind of shape which is almost like boxy rectangular with nests I think it overall creates nice complex uh, rhythm so first uh, first horizontal line um, of the far like, I don't know it's a right or left bank of this river they call this river and um, then you have that dark line which gives nice feeling of perspective far and close um, kind of, I would say mid ground and then you have boats kind of uh, backs which create it's not too many it's like it's division to three four and major uh, horizontal lines if I had a choice to start new painting I would consider this view as well as very uh, successful composition wise uh, this boat is very impressive you're talking about this boat right yes boat this dark I think it's like black or indigo very dark uh, color um, what's great about it it's, it's good to paint it from the real view because if you take pictures it'll be distorted it will look like a spaceship um, I think it's not that idea maybe uh, to include the shadow questionable yes this kind of yeah the roof a lot of contrast uh, questionable composition but overall I like the the shadows uh, in shadow different values different color uh, shades and also strong light effect because you see this uh, kind of deck uh, mooring uh, deck is, has a catch a lot of light so strong shapes uh, a lot of small details and a lot of uh, solid large details uh, what's another nice view I I was considering to paint maybe not large one but at least to try is um, is view right from this um, shack or whatever barn so because it's comfortable it's a little dark paint uh, to paint and uh, standing here uh, but overall there is a nice contrast of the dark kind of like frame type of composition and then you can see include those boats maybe it's too busy uh, maybe just one boat could be included um, I would not really paint those houses would just do trees in the, in the distance humidity could be shown with uh, more of a blue cooler um, shadows um, yes and it's hard to say how much of stuff could be included I would say maybe a couple of details like this it's really kind of theme oriented uh, it's a oyster or a lobster or crab uh, crab barrel crab, yes i don't know how they call it barrel barrel, barrel. barrels yes or this basket. seems to be nice as well and i think it's movable so maybe like move a little bit more so, so include extra step this is using and artistic is license to move the stuff around <laughs> uh, yes, it's a museum, it's a living museum, so we uh, also can contribute. Actually, they have special equipment, the oysters could be, you can try to get oysters. Most of people get shells only <laughs> without oysters. Uh, the boys belong to the museum? Uh, we should ask them, do you belong to the museum? <laughs> no, you're not part of the exposition. <laughs> yes, okay, then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I really like this stuff. Uh, this. Yes, um, of course, if you want to paint, probably something. Nicely, these blues, nice like dark green and bright uh, orange. All right, let's see what is the far is working on. So this is the, his beauty. 
Mm, yummy, is, yummy, yummy. The work still in progress. Uh, blocking stage was pretty much finished and I was working on water effect because I'm afraid the boats will take off. That happened before and who have <laughs> been in that situation start feeling like a little anxiety. Um, I think overall design and composition, um, I, it feels solid. It was tested so I started yesterday and still feels good today as well. Um, now I created some like a number of patterns, try to introduce windows, so I still will be alternating uh, fine lines and bolder brush strokes to create that variety and feeling of natural world, complexity of it, uh, feeling of air. So, um, and one of the problems that the boat, like which had mast, uh, and had like a longer whatever the gear and it's different boat now <laughs> uh, I was contemplating shall I change uh, the view and create that one but that boat is which we have today is longer than that one which we had yesterday so it doesn't fit if I block this area totally then we'll have a feeling of fence we just approach and there is no way, way to jump over this area to the uh, far distance. So I want to keep this passage open. It's not much, but I think it feels better emotionally. I don't like no escape situation. I'm not claustrophobic, but I don't <laughs> want people to have claustrophobia looking at my painting saying, oh my God, I, can sta I cannot stand it. Take it away. <laughs> All right, sounds good. And this is his palette very messy. Yes, it got cleaned uh, a few times during the painting process. Uh, and that's the reason why I like glass. So a couple of times my regular glass palette, which I like, which was here, got broken. So I work on plexiglass now, which is okay. It doesn't look that neat, uh, but it's kind of safer. <laughs> and this is the prolific painter that I recommend uh, as well to yes. everybody. Yes, uh, many artists use it and find it one of the um, most successful you know, balance of quality and sizing wise because it fits well to kind of like a large, relatively large backpack or backpack which I have, which is it looks like the same as very close to what Vlad has. This is mine. Yes, this fits very well. Like, if it was half inch longer or half inch wider, it wouldn't fit. In. So it looks like this was done exactly for this type of backpack. <laughs> yeah, well designed. Well designed, sturdy. I'm using it maybe for four or five years. No cracks, nothing. Yeah. Also, Zufar had just released with what company? Streamline. Streamline. He just released a video of four easy steps of in painting, right? Or your uh, four easy steps. It's called landscape painting in four steps. In fact, uh, Streamline, Little Doll, so they're all under one, um, uh, different brands under one umbrella company with Eric Rhodes. They've been choosing several versions of this DVD, so it should be landscape, painting, four steps. So it's called landscape painting in four steps now as a branded product. Uh, I, on that DVD, which was recorded in March in Austin, Texas, I explained my method. And the idea of that me method, that uh, learning, and every time, even if you're a seasoned artist, you learn, you learn how you respond to the scenery, what scenery teach you, what it has definitely some hidden uh, like, um, problems. And while we work, we explore. It's on one side, it's, it's challenging, on the other side, it's exciting. Um, and I'm, my idea that same view which we plan to finally paint whatever larger size or smaller size need to be reapproached several times so through sketch through color study then final again uh, graphical compositional decisions on final drawing and then final painting because not every view which looks nice maybe nice for photography is not suitable for painting uh, that's my idea and um, Imagine if you have to quit after four hours painting on larger canvas or you, you quit 
uh, idea of painting with you because once you started working on your sketch, color study, on smaller size, like half an hour later, say it's not gonna work. So that is why you are working right now on this piece as a study, even though you probably will be able to sell it, right? Yes. But you're going to transfer the drawing to uh, that canvas, which is 18 by 20. What is it, 18 by 24? Yes, I yeah, 18 by 24. This, yeah. So this will be. Uh, so basically, he did a study on a sketch, and then he studied right here. This is uh, uh, what is it? 11? 16 by 16 by the, the 12 by 16. 12 by 16 as a study work, which will he, he probably put in the gallery to sell, and then he's transferring to this bigger piece. So he, this is his pro process. Make sure the composition is right. Yes. Uh, when I work at home, of course, there is no limit, so I can arrange my work uh, whatever way I want. Here, during comp competition, this part and this part should be done like all on site, so with no photography used. So all the references which I have should be created on site. I will not be able to, like, uh, like from painting at home from this color study, working on then on the bigger one everything should be done but this actually is a good test and I want to keep it kind of feel fresh feel like it's made on the go it's maybe we'll leave it like more app like semi abstract uh, we're going a little more with more details than when I usually work on my color studies at home so that would be probably enough information I just would care about not of much of design here but more of did I get the right color and value for this uh, this shape or that shape, the water uh, reflection, is it right value or not? Um, once I caught that, I would not chase shapes, lines, uh, because I can lose in colors and values, you know? There is one or another, it's hard to balance all together uh, in, when you have a time limit. So composition versus colors and values. Colors and values on painting are more important at this stage. So this is Zufar's uh, steps, four steps, uh, his approach to painting. So we're actually lucky today because he's gonna transfer right now. He's gonna finish a little bit on this study and then transfer the drawing and we'll be able to actually see him transferring the drawing from this study to bigger piece, which will be probably working this as a competition piece, right? Yes, that's my idea so far, unless I create something more exciting. <laughs> but time is ticking very quickly. So I think my larger piece of this view will be my one of competition pieces. So I have a little spoiler. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's watch Zufar doing his, uh, his magic. So now Zufar is working on some details. It's the final touches before he transfers this. But, and keep in mind, this is also the piece that he's going to put in the gallery for sales. So this needs to be not just a study, that needs to be a completed painting. So, but this will give him a time to actually study a little bit more on this piece and the smaller piece before he actually is going to transfer everything to a bigger uh, canvas, bigger size canvas, and start working on his competition piece. So a competition piece, this is a piece, a uh, painting that will be actually judged um, for the awards. And I can tell you is the judges uh, here in the Eastern. And Eastern, as uh, so far, the Eastern uh, plein air com uh, competition is considered as one of the biggest probably in the United States, right? Biggest, the biggest. The biggest. It's a well-organized, uh, high-end um, high um, prices, awards and I would even say high-end purchases, right? Yes. Yeah, so... All right, so let's see the magic of Zufar Bigbov. So Zufar, while you're painting, um, can we ask you questions about like how you started, where you studied, um, who you are, just briefly? And now you study in school in Russia, right? Yes, uh, I started studying early and uh, I could continue to become, to go through all 13, 14 years of uh, education to become 
certified licensed artist uh, but you know artists not always go this way and I cannot consider myself as self-taught because I studied for five years and oil painting was part of the curriculum I was lucky to study in that school which they say like you want to do oils let's start and we also had a, a plein air as a part of curi curriculum so I've been lucky uh, covering these two major things which I'm doing at this moment right now um, uh, talking about the place I think uh, my school and geographically and um, influence wise considered Nikolai Fetchin to be one of the uh, masters we kind of all school and teachers been inspired by doesn't mean that every art uh, every artist every uh, teacher instructor was painting as Nikolai Fetchin but you know you feel when you have one of the biggest top artists who've been director of the school um, in that area like major school you start feeling that you know it's it's a, a like a monument <laughs> it just get stuck in, in, in your brain those who painted in schools where the Levitan taught they would say yes we kind of like they always the Levitan get cited more works can get, get discussed and um, so I would say in my school, yes, Nikola Fetchin was one of the uh, top respected uh, artists. Of course, along with Levitan, Shishkin, Repin, I'm sure you all, you can name them uh, because the Russian art is quite popular uh, among American artists. Um, I uh, decided to be a doctor after high school and it was actually a send documents to medical school and school of architecture I've been accepted to both schools of my choice then I last minute I decided to be a doctor <laughs> so you were practicing as, as, a, as a doctor right I've been no I finished residency I um, then I came here as a doctor like through exchange program with Yale University but then um, of course, to get to practice, I need to finish residency, and before that, I, have to, I had to take all exams. I took all exams, but then I decided that my art, in the meanwhile, my art career was growing faster than medical field, and I had a feeling that as an artist, I'm more gifted than as a doctor, even though uh, I still consider medical education very important in my life to shape my character, my view of the world, and human life so I I do professionally art and I work in medical field not as a doctor uh, the lower level as special assignment team RM um, I still want to stay in touch with the medical field of course during the COVID-19 I've been one of the essential workers there was much more calls from hospital to come and help in intensive care unit and step down units where most of the patients have been so um, I haven't quit my medical field totally yet.
Oh, we will let Zufar work on his his piece. Uh, I was thinking painting, but I, to be honest, I'm not in the, in the mood of painting right now. I just want to walk around and I see several painters painting, so I just want to show you how they paint and just walk around. Somebody just got very comfortable. Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Here's another painter. Beautiful paint. Beautiful start. Yeah, well, it's just starting, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully it'll work out. All right. Great day to paint. I'm yeah. Sure. Oh, you, you got a nice environment here. Oh, it's an amazing environment. Everybody's so nice. I love all the volunteers. They're just as nice as can be. And um, I was here last Saturday, actually. I painted last Saturday here. And the one in the middle was the one that I finished last Saturday. Oh. So, yeah. Yes. Look at that. So this is a piece that he's working. You work on this uh, the second day, right? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. And this is what? 36 by 36? Uh, 30, 30. Oh, 30, 30. Wow. Beautiful piece. Oh, Neil is very well known as a drama painter. I like your drama paintings. Ah. Yeah. Um, I remember the uh, last year you won something on Oil Painters Association or yeah. something. It was uh, um, it was it two houses and what was the name of that? Uh, 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 captain something the yard or oh, something? The captain's chair. Yeah, captain chair. Yes, that was beautiful that was painting. On Egan Island. Yeah, I yeah. Painting up there. Hey. Beautiful painting, you. And this is his setup. This is B-Port easel, right? Uh, I mean. It's a uh, uh, take easel. Oh, take it. Oh. It's, it's, it's uh, the same idea, but it's made uh, up in the angle. Oh, OK. More sturdy, or? Uh, it's uh, the, the hardware on it is better. Better than, OK. Yeah, that other one. I had one of those other ones. And we have a big box here, but let's you know, not, let's look not the uh, easel. Let's look at his painting and his brushwork. Um, very nice. So, what is your approach to painting? try to paint realistically but not like render totally render it you know so that it looks like a photograph it's more I, I try to find a balance between sort of the uh, poetry and the uh, reality of the subject you know so it looks like so a painting not yes. as a photograph yeah yeah that's my philosophy right there uh, I, it's you know, sort of impressionistic, as you can see. I gotta turn this a little for the sun. My glare. Uh, yeah, and I. Uh, Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, I like the reflection right here and under the uh, lighthouse, oh, which really works really beautiful. Yeah, it was kind of just catching a little catching light a little bit of light uh -huh. uh, the early this morning. Uh, I started this like yesterday before the sun came up and uh, came back today to, you know, because once I 
sort of finished all the drawing and everything. Uh, it was like midday sun, and uh, so there were a lot of nice things happening. So I came back early this morning to kind of work on that part of it, the, the sky, the color in the sky, the water, and trying to get the value relationships correct. Because midday, it's totally different, so. Yeah. Uh, but once you have everything in there, then you can just focus on the color and the values and things like that. Well, thank you, Neil. Uh, thank you, Vlad. Thank yes, you. Nice talking with you. Nice talking okay. with you. Well, that was Neil Hughes, very nice guy. A good painter. Uh, he won many, many awards. Uh, it's just nice talking to him. All right, so we are on our way back to Zufar, see what he finished, and um, probably gonna come tomorrow when he will be working on a big piece here. Somewhere else, we'll paint together, and we'll continue. So let's see what he's done. So unfortunately we didn't see today uh, the magic of trans transferring this small painting study work to the big one, to this size. <laughs> but hopefully we will see it tomorrow. So I will come tomorrow and we'll, we will catch the far again and we will uh, and we will catch him anyway. He's not gonna disappear. He's not gonna escape from us. Right yeah. Dufar? Yes, I'm bound to my art followers, lovers. So if we paint something, it should be for people. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna finish at, uh, at this moment on this painting, right? Yes. Or are you gonna finish the final touches? No, I'm done. So You're my done. palette is cleaned. I wanna start um, and continue working with a freshly squeezed paint. So it's lunchtime. Yeah, so let's go. So it is getting very hot and we decided with Zafar just go grab lunch and eat and he needs to go to artist, meet the artist uh, event uh, with the collectors who actually paid $10,000 just to visit and see them painting and, you know, and uh, meeting with the artists. Even though this is um, 11, I think uh, Zufar is Zufar's 11 times or 10, 10th visit here in Easton. Uh, he's always, uh, and people are always inviting him here. So we're gonna eat, chill, and uh, and uh, I will take off back to Baltimore and I'm probably gonna come tomorrow because I really want to see uh, Zufar working on uh, on a bigger piece and I want you to see this because that will be awesome experience uh, To see him actually transferring the drawing and starting painting on a bigger piece um, I Love his paintings uh, Not because he's my friend, but you know actually we met based on uh, you know on paintings So I, I found him found his paintings it was awesome and um, it was a long time ago so uh, probably we're gonna recoup tomorrow or maybe today uh, during the lunch I would like to ask him a question he has a good story uh, he's very humble uh, he, and he's a good you know has a good personality he's a good doctor a very good doctor and he's the he's the artist, the artist, not just artist, but the artist. Oh, right now we're chilling with Zufar yeah, so in the restaurant. Lunch time. This is Vietnam Vietnamese, you know, food. But we already tested him. He cannot paint and talk. So now we're gonna test if he can eat and talk. If he can uh, eat, uh, if he can talk and wait. <laughs> <laughs> We just place the order and should be brought, you know, in like five minutes in this restaurant. Yeah, so let's, you start explaining your uh, story. So you came here as a, as a doctor on exchange program, right? Yes. And then you decided, let's start from there. So you were working as a, as a uh, on the me medical field, right? 
Uh, of course, I could not start immediately. You know, in the United States, you need to get the license first. Mm -hmm. So um, I was thinking maybe to start as a medical illustrator. Uh, then uh, I met with a couple of people whom I knew at Yale who've been medical illustrators. They said. You know, it's not much of illustration, usually it's work for farm companies and mainly pr producing 3D animation. So it was quite far from what I was expecting. And um, then I started painting. For To be an artist, you don't need to have a license. <laughs> you have artistic license. <laughs> uh, but that's is not it, Is it hard to get? Uh, yes, it's very expensive. Uh, it's not in money, he's it's kidding. In time. He's kidding. Uh, it's like, <laughs> five years of working as a slave and you get an artistic license. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, so you start you start painting. So what was your first uh, competition? Do you remember? Uh, if we start talking about plein air, mm -hmm. um, those multi-day events, first one was in 2012, it was inaugural uh, year, first year for plein air in Finger Lakes. I've been accepted, I won main prize, and there I learned about other events and some of those artists been in Plein Air Easton, and they said, you need to apply, I said, when? So we're talking in May, they say you need to apply in January. <laughs> it was too late to apply for 2012, so I was patiently waiting until January I submitted the works, I've been lucky to be accepted. Um, He's very humble. He's, he was never rejected to any plein airs. Just a uh, small note. Yes, Is it true? Yes, it will happen <laughs> probably one time, but yes, never happened yet. <laughs> Who is here? Okay, we got it. Ready food. for you? you okay, so this is a, this is what you call small? No, this one is ah, this one size. Okay. This one is small size. Thank you. We have only two sizes, small and large. Okay. But uh, the special is just one size. Okay, that's but good. Small bow is not easy to. Put that's okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So oh. shall we break or shall we finish the story? The story is long, so we'll continue. Yeah, after let's food. Uh, you don't wanna see us eating. So we just finished our lunch with Zufar. And uh, he was late to his next event. So I, I decided and then I have to go actually um, back to Baltimore, so we decided to break for today and uh, recoup tomorrow. So tomorrow I will become. I will come back after church. I will come back with, uh, to. He's gonna text me where he's gonna paint because I really want you to see how he's gonna transfer this study work that he's working today. Who was working today to a bigger piece. Uh, unfortunately, he will start in the morning. I'm busy, busy in the morning in church, but in, in the morning he's probably gonna do just drawing and blocking. So we'll probably will come in around two o'clock. It will be good timing, so we'll see how he's actually working on the colors, building up the uh, the shapes and everything else. So um, I think it's a successful day. I love meeting with you know with other uh, uh, artists on plein air when you're not painting, so you're not busy with your schedule and trying to do recording. Uh, you know, I, I just come to do recording. I didn't paint today. And that's fine uh, because I watch you know him painting. Uh, I spoke with several artists, um, and uh, we had a really good chat uh, with Zafar. I mean, it's always so. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode, and we will continue tomorrow, episode number two, and maybe next week I will find another day to come for episode three and then definitely I will come back on Friday uh, collector's preview and I, I mentioned already that I bought actually ticket for as a collector can you imagine that <laughs> why uh, Zafar just told me that he can probably um, you can invite him me as a, his manager but I said you know what I don't like you know lying it's okay 250 not a big deal not not the you know a life-breaking money to invest it's a good investment and probably not probably it will be good for you to to see it 
uh, from the eyes of collectors. Uh, this is the first view of the collect collections um, and the atmosphere. All right, so this will so this will be all for today, and we will uh, we'll get back together tomorrow. Uh, maybe we'll catch some other artists. Uh, I know there is a uh, Susie Baker is there. Ella, Ella, I mean, uh, Kirk Larson, uh, David Daniel Dan, uh, Robinson. I think it was him as well, and many many others. Uh, there is actually one Ukrainian painter, Elena Babak. Olena Babak or Babak? I'm not sure. I'll, you know how to pronounce her last name, but maybe uh, maybe next week I will plan one day to come to Easton and. I will catch them because they, you know, they normally scatter around, you know, in the entire county. But maybe I'll text them to find them where they paint and come so that I can introduce you to the owner, them to you, not you to them. So, this will be all. So, I'll see you tomorrow.